Hello everybody, it's Mr. Arasena, and in today's video we're going to be talking about how to do equilibrium calculations. Yesterday we talked about in class how to do or how to set up the equilibrium expression, but we never actually went over how to do an equilibrium calculation. So this is kind of an extension of once you get the equilibrium equation set up, how do you go about actually doing the calculation? Now to do this, we're gonna go through a bunch of examples. So at various points, uh, you should consider pausing the video and trying the example yourself. All right, so let's just dive right into it. Let's start with, uh, we're, gonna go, we're gonna work with this reaction for the most part today. So NO2 gas plus O2 gas will produce and O2 gas and to fully balance this I need to put a 2 there. So this is gonna be our example calculation okay, and there's gonna be like kind of six general broad categories of examples that you will encounter when dealing with equilibrium calculations. So example one. In this example we will give you a two liter container Two liter container contains six moles of NO2, and also three moles of NO, and finally 0 0.2 moles of O2. And this is at equilibrium. After the reaction has happened, it reaches a state of equilibrium and at equilibrium it contains this many moles of NO2, this many moles of NO, and this many moles of O2. Okay, this is key, at equilibrium. Uh, some of the examples we'll deal with, I don't think we'll get to them today, but in the next lesson we'll deal with what happens, what do we do with uh, examples where, where we don't start at equilibrium. Okay, so at equilibrium, those are, those are our amounts. Now keep in mind that these are not concentrations. So not concentrations. Because a concentration, call that concentration is molarity. Concentration equals molarity. Molarity is calculated as moles per volume. So before we can do anything here, we need to change all of our amounts into concentrations. We need to change mole amounts to concentration or to molarity. can't just use the mole amounts in these calculations because our equilibrium expressions are based on the concentrations of the substances, not the actual mole amounts. So that's kind of our first step. So take a moment, you can pause the video and we'll calculate the moles of NO2, the moles of NO, and the moles of O2. So pause the video, calculate the amount and see if you get it correct. Now, moles of NO2 should equal 6.00 moles divided by 2.0 liters. This will give you a concentration of 3.0 molar. Moles of NO will be 3.00 moles divided by uh, 2 liters. Let's move this up a bit. Divide by 2 liters for a total of 1.5 molarity and the moles of oxygen we had 0.2 moles of oxygen over 2 liters to give us 0.1 molarity. So here's our molarities. Now what do we do with these molarities? Well in our question or in our reaction we had to oh, I actually forgot to actually tell you what you had to do on this example okay so let's calculate keq that was the whole point of this Calc once we have that we can calculate the k value for this reaction now because this is a k value of an equilibrium we will call this keq 
to say this is the equilibrium constant. As a reminder, our k value was an equilibrium constant. So once we have the concentrations of everything at the equilibrium, we can then calculate the equilibrium constant. But first we'll need the expression. So pause the video here uh, and write down the expression and see if you are correct. All right, the expression for this should be as follows. We had NO2, but we had two of them. So I have to square it. We had an NO, and we had two of these, so we square this. And we have an oxygen, so like that. This is equal to KEQ. Once we have that written down, now we can calculate what the actual KEQ value is. Because we already calculated our expression, or not our expression, our concentrations previously. So here's the concentration of NO2. Here's the concentration of NO, here's the concentration of O2. So we can just put those values into our equilibrium expression and carry out the calculation. So pause the video here, put the values in, carry out the calculation, and see what you guys get. Alright, so we should get the following. So concentration of NO2 was 3 molar, so that'll be squared. Concentration of NO was 1.5 molar, that'll be squared. And the concentration of O2 was 0.1 molar. And this will equal KEQ. Throwing this into your calculator and you should get a KEQ of equal to 40. Since KEQ is really large, this kind of gives you an idea of which way the reaction is going to go. Since our KEQ is large, and large is basically any number bigger than 1. It's large, the reaction goes forward. The reaction is more likely to go forward. Or at least heavily favors the forward reaction. So that's how we can calculate KEQ. So to recap, in order to calculate KEQ, we need the equilibrium expression. So here's the equilibrium expression is here. We need the equilibrium expression. And we need the concentrations of each of the substances that are involved in the chemical reaction. Okay, on to example two. So second example, we're just going to stick with the same reaction, but we're going to calculate for a different quantity. So let me just rewrite the reaction again. So our reaction is as follows. 2NO plus O2 2 and O2. I'll put everything in a gaseous state so they actually matter. And here's how the second example is going to work. We're going to have 4 moles. So 4 moles of NO2 placed into a 2 liter container. This situation is different than the previous example. The previous example was already at equilibrium. This example, we're not at equilibrium. Starting off with 4 moles of NO2 inside a 2 liter. The reaction proceeds and reaches an equilibrium. Action proceeds to equilibrium, according to the equation we have up here. Now, at equilibrium, at equilibrium, we now find we find 0 0.5 moles of NO. There we go. That's all the information we need. Now we're going to ask, what is KEQ? Now some of you might think, okay, the KEQ is going to be 40, but it's not because we don't know what temperature this reaction is occurring at. Remember, K values are unique for every reaction and every temperature equal to action temperature. So in the previous example, we had a KEQ value of 40, but for this reaction, we don't necessarily know if this reaction is taking place at the same temperature as the previous one. So we cannot say that the KEQ is equal to 40. What we can do though is the following. We can say that at the beginning, 
at the start or the initial conditions at the initial conditions initial conditions we have can calculate the concentration of NO2 at the beginning and this is easy to calculate because it's just moles 4.00 divided by the 2 point container for a concentration of 2.10 molarity so that's what we know at the initial conditions we also know that because there was nothing else in the container we know that the initial condition for the concentration of oxygen is going to be zero now you can probably guess what the initial condition of the no2 is going to be so pause the video here and check if you are correct write down what you think is the initial condition of no2 and we'll compare the answers so take a moment pause the video check out write down what you think and then we'll see if you're correct now the no2 because we didn't actually start with any no2 we have initial conditions of a zero molarity now at equilibrium we can say the following so at equilibrium we can calculate do we know how much no2 is present at equilibrium we actually don't so i'm going to call this um uh, we'll call this uh, we'll call it y we'll call it y for you now the o2 we know the reaction has proceeded forward not oh, sorry not forward because in order to create o2 my reaction has to go backwards so, but we know the reaction has proceeded that way because we have calculated or we've detected some amount of no so for my concentration of o2 i know there's some o2 in it in the container but i don't know how much because if no2 is being if sorry if no is being created so if in my reaction here's my reaction if this is being created then some of this must also be created according to this reaction equation I don't know how much, so I'm just going to call it X. Finally, we can calculate the concentration of NO2 because our problem tells us that we have found, I mean, we found 0 0.5 moles of NO. 0 0.5 moles of NO in our two liter container. So we have a concentration of 0. 2,5 molarity. Alright, so that's what we know at equilibrium. The initial condition, our initial conditions, here are our equilibrium conditions. Now, how is this going to help us? Let me rewrite the reaction. Here is my reaction. My reaction states the following. I have two, oh wait, I mislabeled this. This should just be an O. My mistake. 2NO in a gas state plus an oxygen will form 2NO2. Know that our initial conditions, conditions, we had none of this. We had none of this. And we had, what does it say, 2, I think? 2? Yeah, 2. 2.0 molar of that. Then uh, leave a space, leave a line. At equilibrium, we know that we have 0 0.25 moles of this. For the O2, we don't know, but we know we have some of it. And then for the NO2, we know we have some of, or we have some change. We don't know what, what value that is now. Okay, so here's how we set up our table. Now, I told you guys to leave a line between the initial and equilibrium. I'm going to put down a uh, third one, I guess. Yeah, third one. We call this the change. How does each of these values change? Okay. Well, easiest way to show this is using this column here. Uh, this column here. So according to this column... We started off at zero molarity, and then we ended up at 0 0.25 molarity. Now, in order to do that, we have to have some kind of positive change. 
some kind of positive change. That's the only way you can go from zero to some positive quantities. You have some kind of positive change. Now, how big is that positive change? We can actually use this number here to help us. Okay. Basically, the coefficient of our balanced chemical equation, balanced chemical reaction, will tell us how big the change is. Because if this reaction were to proceed, every time 2NO2 reacts, I will create 2NO. So the change here you can say is basically plus 2x. Okay. Because for every change that occurs, every time this decomposes into NO and O2, I, I need two of these to make two of those. So my NO will change by an amount of 2x. Now, we can use that same logic to say, okay, what about for the O2? The O2, well, the O2 is going from 0 to some value x. This technically has a coefficient of 1. So for every 2NO2 that react, I'm going to create 1O2. Call it 1x. Now for the NO2, this change, well... Remember, we only started off with NO2, so the only way that this can change is if this gets reduced by some amount. And the reduction here will be twice what the other ones are. So we'll call this minus 2x. How can we calculate x? One of these columns will allow us to calculate for x. So pause the video uh, for a moment. Discuss amongst yourselves which, one, which column do you think will allow us to calculate for x. And then calculate for x and see if you are correct. Okay, so pause the video, give it a try. So we're going to use the first column because in the first column, we effectively have the following equation. We have initial condition of zero. I'm going to add 2x to that. And this is going to produce 0 0.25 molar of the NO. Using some simple algebra, this will allow us to figure out that x is going to be 0 0.1 Two five molar. Now the cool thing is, once you get this x, this change is actually the same as this x over here. So once you figure out this change value, it's going to be the same for all of the ch all of the x's in our change. This value here is going to be zero one two five molar, and this value here, well, we don't actually need the y anymore because we can rewrite the y as 2.0 molar minus 2x and well i know what x is x is this value here so this is going to be 2.0 molar minus 2 times 0 0.125 molar so this ends up being mm, 1.75 molar so now we have our equilibrium concentrations for all of our substances this will allow us to calculate the actual equilibrium constant because the equilibrium constant keq is equal to the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants no and o2 we have all three concentrations pause the video take a moment to calculate things out and then we'll see if you got it correct calculate this out you get the following no2 was 1.75 squared o was 0 0.25 o2 was 0 0.125 and when you calculate all this out this will give you an answer of about 392. this reaction is taking place at a temperature where the k value is much larger than it was in the previous example. So to recap, the first example was just simply f calculate the equilibrium constant when you were given the equilibrium values. Example one, all equilibrium values known. All example two, this one's slightly different, only some or only some equilibrium values known. All right, on to the third and final example for today. We're going to use the same equation, 2NO plus O2 going to 2NO2 gases.
Now this problem or this example is going to have a slightly different um, solution than the last example, but same reaction. So this word, this problem word is follows. So some amount or a certain amount of NO2, some amount of NO2 was added to a five liter container. To five liter container. Now, the reaction is allowed to go to equilibrium. So reaction goes to equilibrium. Reaction goes to equilibrium. At equilibrium, at equilibrium, we find that the concentration of NO is equal to 0 0.800 molar. And then we have a KEQ value of 24. KEQ is 24. And we want to find out how much NO2 was initially used. And we'll express this in moles. Express answer in moles. All right. Now, how are we going to go about this? We're going to do it in a very similar fashion to the last example or the second example of today, where we're going to list all the conditions we know at the initial start or at the start at the initial part. And we're going to list the conditions we know at the at equilibrium. So our initial conditions are as follows. We know that we have some amount of NO2. We don't know how much. We know we have some amount. So we're just going to call this, we'll give it a variable. I, I like calling this Y. Now, NO and NO2, we know how much of this we have initially. Okay. I want you guys to pause the video and see if you can figure out how much NO and how much O2 we have. When you have the answer, you can continue with the video and see if you are correct. All right, so NO and NO2 should both have initial concentrations of zero because the problem tells us that we started off with NO2. We had no, we had no NO, we only had O2. We only started off, oh, sorry, we only started off with NO2. No NO and no O2 was in the original, con uh, or was not in the container initially. Now, at equilibrium, things change. Equilibrium conditions. At equilibrium, we know that the NO2 amount is going to change because the NO2 has to get used up. I'm going to call that change Z for now. We also know that the amount of NO is equal to 0 0.800 molar. That's fine. And the last thing is, we don't know anything about the O2 other than it has changed by some amount. And we're going to call that amount X. So now we've listed our initial conditions, we've listed our equilibrium conditions. We're going to create a similar table like we did for the last example, where we write out the reaction. So our reaction was 2NO plus O2 will create. 2NO, like so. Then we're going to write down the initial conditions below that. We know that we have none of that, none of that, and we have some amount of this. Change, well, the change, uh, we have 2 here, so we're going to call this plus 2x. This technically has a 1, so we'll just put plus 1x. And this will have a y minus, this will be y minus 2x, like so. And then at equilibrium, we have 0 0.80 molar. At equilibrium, we don't know how much, but it's 0 plus x, so this will be x. And here we have y minus 2x. We actually call it y minus z originally, but after we wrote this out, it's easy to see that the change is actually 2x. We'll just go y minus 2x. All right. Once we get to this point, we can then, one of the columns should give us enough information to calculate x. 
In this case, it's pretty much the same as the last one. Here is the column that allows us to calculate for x. Using this information, we can calculate that 2x is equal to 0 0.80 molar, which means x is going to be 0 0.40 molar. This x is the same here, so this will be 0 0.40 molar and this ends up being y minus 2x or y minus 0 0.80 molar all right so now that we've got all of the equilibrium concentrations we can then set up our equilibrium expression like we did for example two where we wrote down the following keq is equal to concentration of no2 or concentration of products divided by concentration of reactants We know that the KEQ value uh, was, wait, did I give you guys a KEQ value? Yep, 24. KEQ value is 24. Now here's where the fun part comes in. We can put in our expressions, but the first expression is already going to look kind of ugly because we have a Y minus 0 0.80 and this is going to be all squared. Being all squared suggests that we might have to end up using quadratic equations, but we can actually avoid using that once we write everything down. NO is 0 0.80 and that's squared. And O2, we calculated as 0 0.40. All right, like I mentioned, this looks like it's gonna be a quadratic, but we don't actually need to expand this. So I'm gonna make a note here, do not expand this. Don't expand this. If you expand it, it makes the problem worse. <clears throat> so we're going to do our best to not expand these equations because it just makes things really ugly. All right, so to avoid expanding this, what we're going to do is we are just going to take this quantity here, basically take the denominator and we're going to multiply it out. So if I multiply it out, then I get the following. I get 0 0.80 squared times 0 0.40 times 24. And this will equal the y minus 0 0.80 all squared. At this point, we can actually take the square root of both sides, like so. And this will allow us to get rid of that seemingly quadratic equation so when i take the square root of a square i am left with whatever is inside the square just not squared anymore because the square root will cancel out the square mathematically now the other side when you put that into a calculator the other side should return an answer of approximately i think 6.144 no sorry uh 2.479 6.144 or we square root it doing a simple algebra you should get that y is then equal to 3.279 is equal to y now this is not actually where we stop though because the question was asking us to express the answer in moles y as calculated here is actually a molarity you remember way back up here these were all concentrations. So this table is all about concentration. All right. So to go for moles, so this, this quantity here, this is the concentration of NO2. Or, and then more specifically, this is the initial concentration of NO2. Now the question was asking us how many moles did we start with? So we'll calculate the initial moles of NO2. And this would be the concentration, 3.9 molar, times the volume, which was 5 liter container. And doing that calculation, we'll return an answer of approximately 16.4 moles. And that's how we can calculate initial amounts in moles with a slightly more complicated problem. Now, like I mentioned up here, if you get an equation where you have a square and there's an expression inside the square, don't expand it. You should be able to carry out a similar calculation like this where you take everything in the denominator and just multiply it out. And then that should simplify things for you. Now a little background information. Uh, the table we wrote down, 
we call this a reaction ice table the reason we call it a reaction ice table is because we write down the reaction so balanced chemical reaction goes on top and it has to be balanced properly otherwise uh, it doesn't work balanced chemical reaction below it you write down your initial conditions so initial conditions are very important below the initial conditions are then the change and the change is always based on the based on the coefficients of the equation and then finally the last one is the equilibrium conditions equilibrium conditions this is kind of why we call it a reaction ice table because the acronym is basically reaction ice your textbook describes it as a start change equilibrium table but um, for me i always refer to it as a reaction ice table that should be enough for today to get you through the first bit of the assignment uh, you guys should be able to work on the following questions without too much difficulty so exercises numbers 47 all the way up to i believe 52 actually you guys should actually be able to go up to 53 7 to 53 should be on pages 70 to 71 we'll, we'll get to the rest of the questions uh probably on in the next class next class uh, i don't want to overwhelm you with the math so for now uh, work on those questions take your time it will be a it, it will be time consuming but you should, you should have plenty of time today to do that all right if you have any questions uh, you guys know how you can contact me and if not then ask me in class next time we see each other all right have a good day everybody